let's look at this marketing example of a contractor named Tim. All right, so Tim, he's a contractor and he's currently doing one job a week. It takes him one day to do a job and he makes $1,000 profit for every job. So he's doing one job per week, takes one day, and he earns a thousand bucks. So Tim wants to figure out how he can fill the rest of his days with these thousand dollar jobs. And the way that he does that is through marketing. Marketing is the act of acquiring new customers. Um, everything that happens up to the point where you're selling your services is, is marketing. It gets you those sales conversations. Marketing is like the fuel to your business. And this is the thing that most contractors don't understand. Most contractors think, okay, if I'm going to invest in marketing, I want to get like a 10x return. I want to put $1,000 in and get $10,000 out. And while that's completely possible and it happens all the time, it very, very rarely happens the first time you do it. Um, if it was if it was that easy, if anyone could just go put $1,000 into their marketing and get 10000 out, everyone on the planet would just go do that and pretty quickly it wouldn't work anymore because what everyone else is doing doesn't work. That's just the way economics works. So the, the point is that that misconception is causing a lot of contractors to miss out on all the opportunity around them because since they since nobody will promise them a 10x return on their investment they just don't invest anything they're like no it's not worth it well i used to think that too it took me many years to get over this limiting belief that the only way i was going to invest in marketing is if i could get guaranteed a gigantic return and that's just not how marketing works uh, marketing is an iterative process. As long as your company needs customers, you're going to be need you need to be doing marketing. And the more that you do it, the more things you try, the more experiences you have, the more successes and failures that you have, the more that you can learn and the better you get. So this is the typical way that it goes. And the first goal for Tim is not getting a 10x return on his investment. The first goal is just becoming profitable. That's it. If he can put $1,000 in and get one job and make $1,000, that's a win on day one. And you might be thinking, oh, well, if the, all he had to do was add extra work, but he didn't make any more money. And that's true, but he took one giant step towards finding a profitable marketing strategy. So let's just look at that, okay? He now, Tim found a way to get one extra job a week and it cost him $1,000 to acquire that job, okay? So now he has two jobs per week. It takes two days to do them. It costs $1,000 for marketing. He still earns $1,000 because he earns 2,000, but he has to deduct what he spent on marketing and now he's left with that $1,000. Okay, and let's just say Tim goes through this for three or four weeks and he's not making any extra money, but he's getting better at marketing. Um, and he's figured out that if he made a few changes to the way that he approaches this, he's actually able to get a job now for $500 instead of 1000 So now he's got two jobs per week. Still takes two days. And um, he's, he's spending 500 for marketing now. And he still earns 2,000. So he earns 2,000. He spent 500 on marketing. Now he made $1,500. So he got 150% of his investment back. Now he's getting somewhere. Now he's thinking, okay, now it's worth it for me. Sure, I'm not making $1,000 like I would on a normal job that just finds me randomly, but I only get one of those jobs a week. So in order to fill up the rest of my time, I need to, I need to do more marketing. I need to invest more in this. So Tim decides 
after he figured out how to get a job for $500 and profit $500 from that job, that he's going to fill up the rest of his schedule. Okay, so now he gets three additional jobs from his marketing on top of the one he already got. So now he's got four jo or five jobs per week. It takes five days. So now he's at capacity. He can only do one job per day, but he's fine with that. He wants to work full time. He's uh, paying $500 a job for those four jobs. So he's spending 2000 on marketing each week and he earns 1000 for that first job that just finds him randomly referrals repeat business whatever and then he earns another $500 well he earns another thousand dollars per job for four jobs okay so 4000 from the additional jobs and he invested 500 for each one so a total of $2,000. So minus 2,000 for marketing. And now he's making $3,000 a week. So he found a way to put 2,000 in the front end and turn it into 4,000 on the back end. So he's, he sees a 200% return on his investment. And at this point, he's pretty happy. And he's going to continue trying to lower his marketing costs so he could make more money. But Tim has a wild idea. What I mean, he can't take on any more jobs the way things are right now. But having more job opportunities would give him options. So right now he's spending 2000 a, a week on marketing. He's going to double that. And now watch what happens. So now he's going to spend 4000 4, a week on his marketing. He can still only do five jobs per week. If he doubled the amount of leads coming in, he'd have four additional jobs. So plus four opportunities. And since his capacity is five, he's got two options here. He can hire more people. So if he hires one guy, his capacity will double, essentially. One guy equals the ability to do 10 jobs per week instead of five. Or if he doesn't want to hire a guy, he can raise his prices. And let's just say he raises his prices 50%. So instead of 1,000, it becomes 1,500 profit per job. Now, I'm a fan of that one because if you have nine job opportunities every week and you raise your prices 50%, half of those are gonna say no. So let's just, for the sake of this example, say four of them say, no, that's too expensive. But five of them still say, okay, yeah, let's do it. Okay, so let's just run the math on this now. So he's still doing five jobs per week. We'll just copy this. So he's doing five jobs a week. Takes him five days to do it. He's making, you know, now he's making 1500 per job. So what's 1500 times five? That's 7,500 a week. So before he was making 5,000, now he's making 7,500 per week. And remember, he doubled his marketing investment. So he was spending 200, but now he's, or 2,000, now he's spending 4,000. And so when you subtract his marketing expenses from his weekly income, now he's making 3,500 a week. So before he was making 3,000 a week. 
He doubled his marketing budget and now he's making an additional $500 a week or $2,000 a month, which isn't a huge increase, but it's still an increase and he's still doing the same amount of work as he was before. And this is the secret that the most successful companies have figured out. They've figured out that they can invest more on marketing than any of their competitors are and actually make it more profitable for them to do so. And while most contractors are stuck hesitating to ever even pull the trigger on any kind of marketing because they don't understand the process that this needs to go through, they just never take action. And those few companies out there who go through this process and bite the bullet and invest some money and figure out how to make this profitable and how to do this, they're able to, they're, they're able to blow up their competition out of the water. So this is a pretty extreme example. This guy's spending $4,000 a week on marketing, which is a lot of money. That's 16 K a month on marketing. And at the end of the day, his profit after he pays for his marketing is what? 12, 14 K. So he's dealing with pretty big numbers, but at the end of the day, he's spending, you know, more on marketing than he was even making before. Um, but that's what it took to get him to this point. And he, what's cool about this, I'm not saying you need to spend $4,000 a week on marketing. This is just an example. You need to crunch your own numbers. You know, how much money do you make on, on a job? Here, I'll write these out for you. And what's your capacity? And you got to figure out, you know, if you if you could handle two more jobs a week or whatever your capacity is, how much could you spend to acquire those jobs? Like if there was a magical store you could go to and you could just buy paying customers, how much would you be able to spend and break even? And and then how much would you spend to make a hundred percent return on your profit, on your profit, on your investment? Meaning, how would you, or a 200%, how would you be able to double your money? Um, so how much could you spend per customer? And by figuring this stuff out, you'll start to figure out what your marketing budget can be. You know, let's, let's say that you decide that you can spend $1,000 per week in order to make this work. And you know, you might not even make your money back on week one or week two. So you might have to lose a little money up front. But if you could get to the point where you could put a thousand in and make a thousand out, then the next step is putting a thousand in and making two thousand out or three thousand out. And you can start to get more opportunities than you can handle. And that gives you options on what you can do. You can pick and choose what jobs to take. You can charge more, raise your rates. You can hire more people. You can do a lot of things to help you get more out of the opportunities you have. But the thing is, is most contractors, most construction companies, they're stuck in the land of not enough opportunity. They're desperate to get jobs so they don't charge enough. They can't afford to pay their people more than their competition or, or good enough to keep them interested and engaged or even sticking around so they don't have good crews. Um, or they just they're always kept up at night because they can't keep their crews busy you know, That's the worst thing ever knowing you have a good crew and always being worried if you can keep them busy the way you get around that is by investing in marketing and by Getting to the point with your marketing strategy whether you're doing it yourself in-house or whether you're working with a marketing partner on this Getting to the point where you can put a thousand bucks in and get two or three thousand out because that's scalable. If you can do that on a thousand dollar level, you could put ten thousand in and get thirty thousand out. You could put a hundred thousand in and get three hundred thousand out. That's what the most successful companies are doing. Literally, they've figured out how to spend more than their competition is willing to even fathom in order to get customers and profit off them. So 
you know, hopefully this stuff makes sense to you. Um, you might need to watch it a couple times to, to understand what I'm talking about. And if you have comments on this um, or you want to challenge me on this, please post up in the comment section. You know, let's work this out. Because from where I'm sitting in my experience as a construction guy and as a marketing company guy, this is the math. Like this is how it works. And I'm constantly going back and forth with business owners who are afraid to invest more than a thousand dollars into their marketing and they're scrutinizing every penny. Um, and, but they're not really even tracking what's going on. They don't know how many jobs they got from their thousand bucks. They don't know how much they make and they're just going based off of their feelings, how well it's working. And that's just not how it works. You know, chances are at least in the beginning, you're barely going to be breaking even. Sometimes you even operate at a loss for a month or two while you figure out this marketing thing. But the last way you're going to figure it out is by not doing it. So I'd love to hear what you have to say about this. If you found this helpful, hit the subscribe button because there's more of this kind of stuff coming and I'll see you on the next one.